Hello, welcome to this <clears throat> later morning taste lunch. There's more glare outside than I thought. Look at the light. It's raining again. It's been raining pretty much incessantly a month, <clears throat> which some people say is good because it's going to cool the Gulf and you don't have powerful hurricanes if the Gulf water is cool as hurricanes thrive on warm water. I don't know the science behind that. All right. <clears throat> I know it's real, it's very wet. So we got two inexpensive American blended whiskeys, both with a plastic cap and both under $12. This, they're both 750 milliliter bottles. Let me do some calculation real fast for something else before I forget. Let's see. Okay, anyway, uh, we have T.W. Samuels, registered U.S. Patent Office, Kentucky Blended Whiskey, 40% alcohol, blended and bottled by T.W. Samuels Distillery, Bardstown, Nelson County, Kentucky. Wow, it's really heaven hill, okay? There really was a company called T.W. Samuels, and it really is no longer an independent company. It really is just a collection of brands. They do make a straight bourbon in the white label, which I could have bought, but I can't buy everything. So every drop contains Kentucky whiskey. Established 1844, it says. Established 1844. Now the interesting, and I got this at Winn-Dixie. It was $8.99. I could search around and get it for probably $6.99, but then I don't feel like searching around. I bought it. Okay. A distinctive blend. Oh, yeah. Here's the Heaven Hill Crest on the back. You can find a numer a numer Ooh, you can find numerous bottles with this logo on the back, this crest, and it's all Heaven Hill. Plus, I got the Heaven Hill shaped bottle, which is straight cylindrical. There's no lip at the bottom or anything. It's just straight. That's the standard Heaven Hill universal bottle for gin, rum, brandy, whiskey. Choice blended whiskey. Oh, yeah. 20% Kentucky straight whiskey and 80% grain neutral spirits aged 36 months. So we know there's a straight bourbon, T.W. Samuels. There's the Kentucky blended. Are there others? I think there might be a 100 proof bottle and bond. Now, the funny thing about this label is they show in the new label and embedded in it is the old label with the wheat and the barley on there. And it says quality since 1844, T.W. Samuels, Kentucky blended whiskey. So like, look, there's the label inside the label. Strange. It's blurry because I got to put it so close, but that's the label inside the label. You can find all advertisements in the bottle had that label. Okay. The competitor in a similar bottle, but there's a lip at the bottom. See, this is the Laird's distinctive standard bottle for everything. This is for Queens. I went to Bourbon Street and saw six queens, but okay. Anyway, 101 proof, 101, 101 proof, age three years. They're both age three years. They're both at a 80-20 blend ratio, meaning 80% grain spirits. And I went into a long discussion of that in the previous video, so you can look at that one. 20% straight whiskey, invariably bourbon. Blended and bottled by Casser Laird Distillers Company, Scobieville, New Jersey. It's really Laird and Company. What happened was Casser got bought out by Laird. Casser Distilling of Philadelphia. So they brought in their whole portfolio, the Four Queens, the Bankers Club, and other products. So there is no more Casser in Philadelphia. Oh, no more distilling in Philadelphia. But there's still a liquor company there that does bottling and blending, blending and bottling and, and aging. Okay, so blending then aging, then bottling. But their distill, distillates come in from other states. And that is called Jacquin's Distillery of Philadelphia down in the south side in the warehouse district. I don't think it's too far from uh, the Philadelphia Eagles and uh, Philly's ballpark. But uh, it's called Jacquin. Jacquin's produces all kind of products you never heard of. 
but they do a lot of uh, liqueurs, liqueurs, cordials, cordials. I know Mathern's got all kinds of Jockeyans cordials, but they use alias names like, uh, you know, uh, Worldwide Distilling Corporation or whatever. And they have like candy cane cordial and all of this. They're the work, America's biggest cordial producer, uh, which is like a liqueur. And then what they use for blending, you really use those for cocktails. Uh, 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 um, um, they also make the very popular Pennsylvania Dutch eggnog for the crisp Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's season. That comes from Jacquant, Pennsylvania Dutch. But we're not talking about them right now. We're talking about Casser Laird, Casser owned by Laird, Four Queens, which is very popular in eastern Pennsylvania, the east side of Pennsylvania for making Boilo, Boilo. A holiday mixture, Boilo, B-O-I-L-O. You can look it up. There's even news reports about the legendary Boilo. Another thing, this bottle, oh, they're the same height. Never mind, never mind, never mind. All right, here we go. You would think, you would think that I should be able to, in a snap, get it right. Four Queens, 101 proof. But it was trouble, it was trouble, it was trouble, it was trouble, it was trouble at dawn between Bankers Club and Four Queens. They taste the same. One is 101 proof, one is 80. So you 40% alcohol versus 50 and a half. <coughs> My throat is dry. 50 and one half percent. But I couldn't tell them apart. So I just gave the win to Bankers Club because it is cheaper. Get get a whole handle for $13.99. I paid $11.99 for uh for Queens. And I paid $8.99 for this. So here we, we have these are not crazy prices like oh I went to Savannah discount and they had it for $3.99, something crazy like that. It was like normal, normal prices. So $8.99 versus $11.99. Is the four Queen's going to be $3 better. Yes, I do believe so. I wasn't totally thrilled with T.W. Samuels, I got to tell you. Same appearance, so we don't have to worry about that. They're both amber gold, amber gold, amber gold. Amber gold. Now, where is the four Queens distilled? This we do not know. It is in one of the 50 states. And if I had to put money on it, I would put $10 on Indiana. <laughs> I think it's probably distilled at Midwest Grain Products. Don't know for sure, but it would make sense because they do the biggest contract distilling in the U.S. of America. Well, we know the T.W. Samuels is from Kentucky because it says Kentucky blended whiskey. And the law, that's the law. It can it requires that if you state Kentucky, it has to be from Kentucky. It can't just be bottled there. It's got to be distilled there. Well, that isn't, that isn't much of a challenge for uh, Heaven Hill because they have a huge distillery in Kentucky. And if I'm not mistaken, they got more than one. All right. You can take a tour of the Heaven Hill experience, which from what I could read on their website wasn't exactly a distillery tour. It was just like you paid us money and they take you around this visitor center and show you the, the wonderful world of bourbon production. Well, that's very nice, uh, I guess, or like a museum. But I would, I, would, I would prefer to go into the actual distillery and see the uh, operations on the ground, like what's really happening, you know, like you do at Anheuser-Busch or Miller in uh, Milwaukee or Barton 1792 Distillery in Bardstown, Kentucky or... Um, Buffalo Trace. They don't take you to everything you should see at Buffalo Trace. Okay, they're not showing you everything, but they're showing you a pretty good amount. It's about an hour and a half tour, and there's no charge. No charge. So you got to pay at Heaven Hill to see an experience, but you don't have to pay at Buffalo Trace, and you see the actual distillery. So think about that. Mackerel says, I'm getting two six-packs of Stockyard Oatmeal Stout today. It's a, one of the best values in the craft beer world. One of the best values in the craft beer world.
these blended whiskeys are so common one to another. It's just like faint corn. It's like generalized grain alcohol. I used to say it was like if you went, if you cut yourself and you went to the doctor, you know, you got injured and you went to the doctor and you could smell the antiseptic in the room, you know, like alcohol in the doctor's office. That might have been a little bit too much of an extreme description, but it's sort of along those lines, like grain spirits. But I think rubbing alcohol is wood alcohol. Same thing. There's a little sweet vanilla, like from oak and a little dried fruit cake, fruit type thing, candied. You know what I'm talking about? You can buy bags of it at the store in the Mylar bags. But it, it, the main component of this aroma for both of them is like not much aroma. That's like the main feature. More on the neutral side than the aroma, aromatic side. So if you want something that smells like You say you didn't say anything. Smells like what? That's what I mean. It smells like emptiness, empty space. <laughs> I mean, if you really struggle through it, you can pick up a nose, an aroma. But if you smelled Elijah Craig Barrel Proof from Heaven Hill and you smell these, you'd be like, oh, no, <laughs> something's missing. Taste time. But. Like we said before, people don't buy these to sit and sniff like, oh, look, I'm doing a video. No, 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 no. They buy them so they can mix it with RC Cola and watch Happy Days reruns after work, hopefully not before work. And eat a Morton, I mean, a banquet pot pie. <laughs> and eat a banquet pot pie. David says, Ron, ever had thoughts on Boulevard Dark Truth Imperial Stout? I haven't had it, so I have no thoughts on it. But I guess I would love it. Did I have one? I had the Grand Crew, right? That was fabulous. The Grand Crew is like 13%. It's like a blend of dark ales from Boulevard. Oh, man, that thing was dynamite. It was sad, though, because a lot of the Boulevard beers that uh, Whiskey Scout brought me were kind of shabby. And I thought Boulevard, I thought Boulevard was supposed to be so great. It's just kind of bland. Kind of like Full Sail, Abita, Magic Hat, Shiner, Samuel Adams, and so on and so on. You know what I mean? Just kind of like ordinary. Most of their beers, I can't say any of them were bad. But it's like, why are you paying all this money for beer that's like on par with Miller High Life? <laughs> I'm not putting down Miller High Life. I'm just saying I can get that for half the price. Dark Truth ain't bad at all. I would like it. Now, I know... Uh, all of these companies like Boulevard, Full Sail, Shipyard, and whatnot, they make fabulous super dupers. Super dupers, you know, 9, 10, 12, 15%. Super Imperial Deluxe Galactic Stouts and all of that. And triple IPAs or anything. Those, they'd be very expensive. And most of the time, those would be out the ballpark. Grand Slam home run. But just like the stuff you get in the variety packs, Terrapin is another company, Sweetwater is another company. <laughs> it's just like the same old mediocre same oldness. Okay. Taste time. And I haven't turned against these craft beer companies. It's just I've been drinking that stuff for so long now. And it's like you you know what you're dealing with. It's like, okay. Raspberry ale. It's got a little bit of raspberry flavor, not really that much, and it's kind of normal. Okay, this one is very. Mm, I knew I had to be on the lookout for that honeydew melon. Am I picking up honeydew melon, which has got to be an off flavor? You know what I mean? It's supposed to taste like grain, not honeydew melon, and I think that's an indictment against Heaven Hill. And I watched that whiskey.com did a. 
uh, about an hour long. I watched it all hour long uh, brewery tour. They gave them the tour. See, they didn't give them the experience. They gave them the tour and they were walking all around and everything. And, uh, and the German guy was like the, the young guy, you know, he's got kind of heavy set. You say, oh, he's drinking too much whiskey. I, I don't think the whiskey got him heavy set. Maybe eating too much uh, German bread and, and schnitzel and sausage and whatnot. Happens in middle age. Uh, but uh, <coughs> if you don't watch it. But he was like, what do you do? What do you do with the bourbon that doesn't come out correctly? You know, because we know, he said, we know sometimes you age it. It doesn't come out right. You, you don't. You know, what are you going to do with it? And the guy was like, well... We just blend it off into one of our blends. And he laughed, ha ha. I say, oh, they cast it off and just throw it out there. No big deal, because you're paying $8.99 a bottle. But he admitted that's what they do with it. They don't waste it. Oh, no, no, no. They don't dump it. I guess if it was so bad, it was like beyond human consumption. But that probably doesn't happen. It's just off. The flavor is not right. It's like, mm, something happened. We knew that temperature spike was going to screw things up. You know, it was some kind of thing happened like that. They ain't wasting it. They make it. <laughs> this. They're taking 80% grain neutral spirits, corn, liquor, clear, moonshine, which you want to call that. And they blend it in this cast off bourbon. They're bringing it to 80 proof and they're selling it. They age it three years. I mean, the whiskey's aged three years. And then they, they put in the unaged grain spirit. They blend it and they're selling it in the bums. I mean, the consumers buy it. Well, I, I didn't mean to say bums. All right. Uh, Dark Truth and Pure Style is very good. I agree, says Ethan. Well, I'd like to try it, y'all. But um, we don't get Boulevard down here in Louisiana. But who knows? Tomorrow it might show up. You know, that's the thing. I tell people, don't send it to me because it could show up tomorrow. And I've had people tell me, you'll never get that beer. Oh, yeah? Now, a week later, there it is. Or a month later. Cheers, Ron, says BC's Beer Reviews. BC's Beer Reviews. Whether it's bottled or can, he's going to review it. He may not like it, but he's going to give it a fair shot. I like whiskey, but it doesn't love me back the next day, you know, at breakfast momentary time. Sorry. Oh, this stuff has some weird rye spiciness, but it's like not correct. You know what I mean? And it has a lot of like neutral taste, which is, you know, is from that 80% grain spirits. And it's got, uh, is it that honey do? I don't know. I don't know about this stuff. Dark truth. Well, isn't that something that's got like eyes on it or something? Maybe I did have that. It's got like some eyes, like his eyes. What did you do to his eyes, you maniacs? He has his father's eyes. But I but guys' eyes are normal. I think I have had it. It don't look so good. Um, I mean, I don't know why people drink this stuff. <laughs> you said because they're drunks. That's a very negative thing to say. I think it's just people drink it because they want to have something boozy to blend with. Like I said, RC Cola. And somebody told me his grandma drinks whiskey with milk. Whatever blows your napkin up. Hey, but if that's what you want to do, do it. Milk, whiskey, okay. Look at this rain. Look at this rain. You can't look at it, but you can hear it. Um, you might say, I bet you 99.999 repeating of the people on this planet are not buying blended whiskey to do video reviews and talk about it for 30 minutes. And I would bet you will win that bet. Okay. All right. Without any sort of confidence, 
Cool. I think this one is the 101, the four queens, because it seems stronger. Don't know that, but it seems that way. Now, I've told you this so many times. You could take a whiskey and put it up against some things, and when you put it up against other things, it'll take taste different. It will taste different. So you take whiskey A, do a solo review. Oh, it's got all these features. Take that same whiskey number A and go up against B. It'll taste different. Then go up against C, D, and E, and F from different companies, and every time it tastes different. Can't explain it, but it, it it will. It will. It will. That's why you got to do it blind. Fago. Yes, I, I I used to get Fago. Well, I mean, I don't drink soft drinks, but I used to be able to get it at a local store, but they stopped carrying it. And I said this this morning in favor of Big Shot. So can you get Big Shot soft drinks? Pyramid. Uh, yeah, green label eyes in a pyramid. Eyes in a pyramid. Oh, Oh, yeah. You know what I'm thinking of? I'm thinking of Outer Darkness from Squatters. That's the one. I'm thinking of Squatters Outer Darkness. Good stuff. Uh, makes RC Cola worse in most cases. Most people don't drink, don't mix it in their drinks for the taste. Oh, no, 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 no. I'm stuck. I only like one whiskey, says Gary. How did this happen to me? I don't know, Gary. Now, I don't see Big Shot up in the middle Atlantic. No, no Big Shot. I have Fago Rock and Ride. Oh, you love Fago Rock and Ride. Okay. Do you have a review on Mah Simator? I never heard of Mah Simator. I heard of Maximator, Augustiner Maximator. I have that. I reviewed that fabulous product. We used to get Vintage Franks and A Treat here in the Philly area. Hmm. Okay, all right, getting down to this. This one seems higher proof. The flavor is corn, like, you know, inferior corn, let's be honest. Same thing, but weaker. All right, I got it. I hope. So which one would I buy? Uh, how about neither? But which one would I buy if I... If you said, well, somebody put a gun to your head. Okay, I'd buy it. Um, oh, I'm picking up that honeydew. Blah. Man, if you want to try some funk stuff, buy these things. This is a mess. But um, I get the 101. Why? Because it's higher proof and I can make Boilo. Um, really think Bankers Club was better than these two. And Bankers Club is cheap as they come. You say, what bankers drink Bankers Club? You know how many bankers drink Bankers Club? Zero. None. It just sounds nice. Like Senators Club. Do you really think people in the U.S. Senate are drinking Senators Club brandy from Laird and Company or Senators Club gin? You know they not. They got people in Congress got $3,000 ice cream. <laughs> they're eating $3,000 ice cream, boutique ice cream. You think they're going to drink Bankers Club and Senators Club? Come on. Come on, man. I think the companies are defunct now, though. Yeah, but somebody might have picked up their brand trademarks, you know. All right. This is the 101, the uh, Four Queens, but I wouldn't necessarily go running out to get it. I think it's more of a legend than a reality. You know, it's the legend. I got to go get some Four Queens so I can make some Boilo. Are you going to go get some Four Queens, Cindy? Oh, yeah, we're going to make some Boilo, boy. All right, but then we're going to go watch the Phillies game, and then we're going to go watch the Eagles, and then we're going to go to the stadium and beat up all the fans who are out of from out of town watching the Eagles because that's our life football. We're gonna fight. My dad was in a union and I used to and he worked at a steel mill and we're gonna fight those Giants fans. Cause you know that shows how smart you are when you go to a stadium and do that. All right. Ha 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 I got it right. Well 
Is that a testament to my expertise? No, it's more like a testament to the fact that it's 101 proof versus 80 proof. So it's less watered down. But I highly recommend either one. Uh, you know, it's funny. When I did a solo review of Four Queens, I thought, yeah, it's all right. It's not bad. But it took it took T.W. Samuels to expose the deficits in that thing. So, like I said, I've said it a million times. Well, not you know, figure it, not literally, but figuratively. You never know until you do the taste challenges. And one whiskey can bring out good things in another, and in many cases, bad things. The cornfields one mile away are already five feet high. A bumper bourbon crop is coming after the ethanol cut. I can't spell ethanol. Ethanol and ethanol. The captain ethanol. The captain ethanol. David Cassidy says, hmm, strange. Okay, well, what I recommend T.W. Samuels. Uh, would I recommend it? Why would I, why would I do that? Why would I want to do something like that to you? What's good about it? Um, what's good about it? Yeah, I'm going to have to get back to you on that. There must be something good about it. But for the life of me, I can't think about what, 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 what it would be. Get out of my face. Okay, uh, what, what about 101, the uh, Four Queens? Yeah, uh, something tells me that this whole series of Four Queens versus everybody else is going to be questionable, questionable. Are there any American blended whiskeys worth buying in reality? Um, well, yes, I think Seagram Seven Crown is credible. Something about it makes it nicer. It's seventeen dollars a bottle. Seventeen, you know, not eight ninety nine, not eleven ninety nine. Seventeen. So, if you if you insist on buying an American blended whiskey, go ahead buy it, but get Seagram Seven Crown. Do yourself a favor. Don't do yourself a disfavor. You know what I'm saying? You don't really have to do like me and run behind all of these. Uh, things. Do I have a go-to scotch? No, I don't have a go-to any liquor because I never drink liquor regularly. You know what I'm saying? Like I don't. Liquid sound asked me that. Because I don't drink. I don't drink liquor. Aside from reviews and taste challenges, literally, this is the truth. I never say, oh, I'm going to drink some liquor. I just don't. I drink beer. I'll admit to that. I drink beer on an off day. Like today, I'll drink four in a whole day. I'll drink one at 8 a.m., which I already did Mike's Hard Mango. Pretty good stuff. Um, I bought it for a review. I don't drink that kind of stuff. Then I'll drink one at one o'clock in the afternoon. Be like natural ice because I got a deal on it. Not a great deal, a deal. Then at three o'clock, I'll drink another beer. And then at five in the afternoon, I'll drink the last one. And that's it. Four 12 ounces. I don't drink a 40 ounce and count it as a 12. I count it as what it is, three beers in Lanyap, plus Lanyap. And um, I have about two ounces of wine with lunch. And that's it. That's it. I'm telling you, I do the taste challenges. Now I had to double up today because Wednesday is not a good day. Uh, considering we got to do the uh, Wednesday night thing, which tomorrow night, by the way, to do a promo, to do a promo, by the way, since you asked, uh, no one asked. Tomorrow night is ready to drink canned cocktails, ready to drink RTDs. They're called RTDs in the uh, industry. I got one from Canada. Johnny Neely has one from Canada. If he can get off of work on time, he has problems with that. But that's understandable. Got to do your job. And um, we'll see who else shows up. So um, Fandango Friday. I plan to do Fandango Friday this Friday at 630 Eastern time. And I have something, a, 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 a pink lemonade flavored vodka of all things. Pink lemonade flavor vodka, which is on, been on the market, oh, about a year. <laughs> it's called Pink Whitney, not Pink Floyd, not Pink Floyd, but Pink Whitney. He said, that's a 
that's a nonsense name, Pink Whitney. There's no there's no sense behind it. Well, there is actually. It's quite logical. Spock would love it. I bartended, but I didn't start bourbon until I was 40. You didn't start bourbon until only 30 years ago? A minister suggested it to me. Fact, I was in a drinking religion. Yeah, the church of the uh, Neoplatonist. -Plat I've heard of them. Church of the Neoplatonists. Strange group. All right, I think they moved to Guyana or something. Anyway, thanks, Gary. And BC, I've got two bottles of Glenn Fittich, 15 year old. Oh, Vazam. And Gary, I have your Larceny bourbon review on my watch later list. I'm trying to get through all those. I didn't realize there was like 50 dozen reviews, 50 dozen reviews. I'm trying to make it through that. So, anyway, who's the winner today? Uh, well, uh, no contest. We'll call it a no contest. Uh, no winner. No winner. No losers. No winners. But I guess if you buy either one of these, you're a loser. You know what I mean? But uh, no winners. Uh, uh, no, I can't call it. I can't call a winner. I can tell them apart. Doesn't mean much, but I can't call a winner. No, 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 no. Next taste challenge. Uh, it's probably going to be Kentucky Bow. <laughs> why? Why? Like Nancy... Kerrigan said, why, why? Might be rather, never mind, I'm not going to say that. <laughs> I don't think I'd rather be hit in the knee. All right, Joe Hill says, cheers. Hello, Joe Hill, cheers to you. King of the Dot says, you do the best reviews, hands down. And on that note, the hands are going down to the stop the broadcast button.